everyone, and welcome back to Toto Santos. Today, we are moving on down the waterfront over to this area of the island, which is actually right next to the old town where we started this city uh, about uh, 29 episodes ago. And we're going to be building something that's quite important for the character of the city, but also for its economy, or, you know, its fictional economy. Obviously, Toto Santos is a very tourist-centered place uh, due to its fantastic weather and beautiful architecture and very pleasing city arrangement, of course. And I figured in lieu of an airport, which I am still thinking I'm not going to be able to do in this city, uh, just because I'm running out of RAM to load custom assets, uh, among other several other reasons. Uh, but anyway, instead of that, we're going to be funneling most of these tourists into the city by this cruise ship terminal. Uh, and then uh, built up around that, there's going to be kind of uh, a small tourist-centered area that we're going to be building. And this is all going to take two episodes to get through because there's a lot of building and I went into a lot more detail on this build than I have been recently. Um, so hopefully you're looking forward to that. Without further ado, let's get into the build. So I began by just laying down a stretch of key along the shoreline here, just to get it uh, into the general shape that I'm looking to do. Of course, I didn't have footage of that, but we're gonna go in and, and be replacing all of that manually anyway. I figured I didn't need to include that in the build. Uh, and then I just put down this avenue right along the shoreline, which is going to be a fairly low speed and pedestrian friendly-ish uh, road that's going to carry all the traffic into here. And then to connect it up with this crossroad here, I just wanted to do kind of a, just a very simple roundabout that we're going to be decorating much later in the episode or potentially next episode, not sure. Uh, so I'll talk more about that when we get to it. Uh, and then I'm just doing very quick general road layout to try to integrate this area into the road network. And then I'm hopping over here, and this is based off something that is actually in San Juan, in this area, is there's kind of an interesting one-way road system uh, that connects up into uh, their original version of this tourist area. And so I wanted to recreate that because it just caught my eye, and also because uh, the new-to-me node controller mod and intersection marking tool mod uh, seemed like they would make this a breeze to make, and they totally did. Uh, so this build as a whole isn't meant to be a recreation of this area, but it's probably uh, just about the closest to the original inspiration in the city uh, that any of my builds have been since the old town and the castle, probably. Definitely took a lot of ideas uh, directly from the area, and when it comes to actual cruise ship docks, when we get to those, it's more or less a a recreation of it because I honestly have no idea what a cruise ship dock is supposed to look like <laughs> other than just seeing it in, in images like this one. Uh, so I just wanted to stick to this real life example so that I got something uh, somewhat realistic or at least believable and something that looks nice. Although there are certainly uh, here and there I've, I've taken creative liberties or uh, you know had to adjust something due to limitation of assets or that kind of thing. Um, so I'm starting by clipping together these absolutely uh, beautifully made but kind of hideous resort assets and I'm just <laughs> I know it's not very realistic to have a building like this wide because you'd want to have you want to be able to have as much uh, real estate as you could to fit windows and, and balconies and and rooms in so that you can you know fit more customers in but I just wanted to have this kind of hulking building here um, and you know this way I get to use all these assets but it just had just the right look uh, in my opinion, for this area. Um, so I'm putting in a few interesting details, like this uh, tennis court that's up on the roof, which I thought was kind of interesting. And I'm going to add a little bit of like a restaurant area and a few more details just to try to blend this whole thing together into the environment. I think the footage can speak for itself here, so I'm going to stop babbling and I'll be back in just a minute to get started on the cruise docks themselves, which I'm very excited for.
And now I'm doing something I've done so many times in this city, and I still haven't quite gotten tired of it, uh, although it can be a little annoying at sometimes. Uh, really anytime you work with, with or near or really just in the general vicinity of water in this game, you're going to get flooding, you're going to get buildings becoming abandoned if you don't have a mod for that, that kind of thing. You know, usual process, I put a gravel road down and sink it down uh, against the key to get the sort of transition I want between uh, the water level and the land level. And then I delete the key and I come in and put this uh, slightly more industrial looking key down first because this area to the right of the tourist areas used to be the main port of the city like decades ago, uh, but it's since been transitioned into just an area that, that performs various services. So we're gonna have a little bit of a private marina and then we're going to have this um, this ferry depot here. I, I believe that's the depot, if I'm remembering correctly. It might be a station, I'm not sure. But either way, we have this ferry building here. But I'm just really laying the whole foundation for this area because we're going to be coming in and detailing it in the second episode of this uh, two-part uh, little mini-series, I guess you could call it. And we're going to be trying to making it fit the aesthetic of, of looking like something that's come in here and replaced this old, what used to be, you know, these... Uh, important and bustling docks and, and turn it into something a little bit more low-key. Uh, and don't worry, we're going to be building, or at least it's the plan, to build a, a very big port in the city because obviously they're going to be getting most of their goods uh, by the sea. Because why wouldn't you when you live on an island? Especially if you don't have an airport like Toto Santos. Okay, now moving on to the main feature of this episode, which is the actual cruise docks themselves. I'm just going to say it right now, this is one of my favorite builds in the city so far. I'm really happy with how much detail I managed to fit in, and uh, I think it has a nice resemblance to the real thing. I start with this just absolutely perfect asset. I mean, it. I think this is meant to be like some sort of train depot or, or something along those lines, but I just think it fits this look perfectly. So I drag this little pier out using roads, uh, very simple. Uh, and then I put this key down just to make sure everything's nice and flat and even, although we're going to, of course, be covering this up and customizing it with some custom assets to make it look a little neater uh, and a little more uh, fitting for the theme. I cannot tell you how good it felt to stumble across this asset when I was looking for uh, assets for this build. Uh, I just think it's so great and just fits this long skinny pier that I'm going for. Um, so it, it was a bit of a challenge, but I did want to make this functional. So I have this functional uh, passenger dock. Uh, of course, it's a classic from Strict Toaster from his uh, CNU series which is very entertaining. You should check it out if you haven't yet. Um, but I, I just love this almost like, I don't know what material it's supposed to be, but it almost kind of looks like marble. And I think that's the kind of, uh, you know, like fake marble would be the sort of look that you'd get in a, a cruise ship terminal that's, you know, at least attempting to look fancy. So I put that down. One of them is functional. The rest are just dummy props to uh, fit the look. And again, <laughs> this is like the second layer. We're going to be putting on a third layer where we cover all of these with details. But I just wanted to make sure that there weren't you couldn't see through, uh, you know, and catch any gaps down to the grass or the key that I put down or anything like that. I wanted to make sure this build was as seamless as I could get it uh, within reason, of course. Obviously, there are always going to be things that I miss. Uh, nobody's perfect, at least of all me. And you saw me waiting for those cruise ships to line up there just to make sure that it was in the general vicinity. You're never, ever going to be able to get things like that to line up perfectly because, well... The assets have different sizes, you know, the assets of the actual vehicles that are showing up. Um, and the the way they line up with the cruise dock isn't necessarily how you might expect. So I just wanted to make sure that they weren't clipping into the dock or that they didn't look, you know, laughably far away. Um, and I, you know, obviously I don't make every single dock. You know, in real life, you'd probably be able to fit a cruise ship on, on two sides for each dock, of course. Uh, I didn't want to have all of those active. I wanted to have just one. Uh, because I think it would just look ridiculous if you had like active docks on the inside of the two cruise ship docks we're going to be doing because then they're going to be you know when they go to to park there or whatever they're going to just totally clip into one another and it's going to look silly uh, but yeah because this is one of the main uh, feature builds not just of this area but like of the entire city uh, I wanted it to be functional so that it's really going to stand out when you look at it from above and from a distance you're going to see these ships moving in and out and do they come in and out? There are so many cruise ships because this is the only passenger terminal in the entire city so far, at least. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do more. I probably should because there's just an incessant line of ships coming in. I even have a mod that makes sure it doesn't spawn an incoming ship until it's completely full of passengers. 
uh, which the vanilla game does not do. It just sends them in, you know, with like a ship with a capacity of 300. It'll send in like a ship with 20 people in it instead of waiting. Anyway, I have a mod that fixes that and I still get just constant cruise ships coming in. So, I mean, now that I think about it and, and talk about it out loud, I'm probably going to have to make another uh, terminal like this somewhere. Probably not in as much detail because I don't just want to repeat myself over and over again in this city. I'd like to do uh, unique builds each episode. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, almost a little too functional is what I'm saying. Um, so I wanted to decorate. There's a little bit of a parking lot. I don't know how realistic it, ha it is to have kind of a large parking lot right in front of this nice building. Um, but, you know, we're doing it. Uh, and then I just wanted to have it covered. Uh, I mean, it's glass. It would probably be better to have something that would keep the sun out, but too late for that. So I'm going to just stick with this. Uh, and I'm putting these poppable surfaces down just so that uh, I can have decals and, and various other things stick to it, because uh, on the, the docks don't take decals. I don't think buildings generally will accept decals on top of them. Uh, so yeah, I have to put down the, the surface there that will take that. Uh, but while I do that, you've seen me make parking lots before, so I don't really have much to say about that. I'll just recap really quickly what I did while I was ranting about the functional cruise dock. Uh, basically, I'm not sure exactly what these things do, but they're kind of these little uh, almost bridges that stick out at the tip of the, the cruise ship dock. I assume that's just like areas where they can uh, you know, it allows them to control where the ship goes uh, when it's docked there. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but it kind of makes sense. And then like, they don't, it's not actually space they need to use for accepting passengers and letting off passengers. So it's just kind of uh, this very utilitarian piece that sticks out into the water. That's my guess. I'm not sure, but I tried to recreate it just by uh, drawing these uh, pedestrian paths out just to, so I could make sure I could get a straight line out from there. And then I put these little bridge pieces on it. Uh, I believe um, we're going to come back to that later and, and detail it, so hopefully you can catch a glimpse of that. Uh, since you can't really see what I'm talking about at the moment, I'm just putting down these uh, balustrades or banisters or whatever you'd call them. Uh, sorry, my commentary is a bit behind here. There's just a lot to talk about with this build. Um, and then I put these little, <laughs> they're supposed to be dynamic signs where you can have messages on them and, you know, put them on your freeway. Um, but I thought they looked kind of like bumpers is what I'm guessing the parts are, but they're like these little black rectangles that stick off the side of the docks. And I assume that's like, you know, to keep the, the ship from damaging the dock or vice versa. Not sure, but I wanted to put those down and I thought that asset worked suitably for that. And then I want this place to look fairly busy. So I have these pedestrian paths also dragged out here to try to get people uh, milling through the area, which they do. This building functions as a unique attraction, so it does attract people to it, uh, which is nice just to make it look a little bit more lively, a little bit more like a, a real cruise dock where you're going to have hordes of people coming in and out all the time. Of course, we're going to come back in later and switch those to the invisible version so that we don't have these ugly fences sticking up. Uh, but it's just always nice to have a little bit of a guide when you're working with something that you can't uh, necessarily see. And that just really helps to line up all these decals or any props you put down, like lighting or benches or that kind of thing. Because um, otherwise, if you don't do that, you might not be able to get uh, the right look. Uh, and you'd end up having people walking through the balustrades or walking through planters. And that is just a completely unacceptable. I mean, it perish the thought. Ridiculous. I mean, I just can't imagine something in this game looking ridiculous like that. Who would let that happen? And just uh, raising up these decals to make them look a little more faded. And we're done with the parking lot for the most part. So we are making two cruise ship terminals in this episode. This is the first one. Uh, probably didn't need to say that, but I'm gonna leave it in anyway. But I wanted one to look a little fancier, a little more expensive. Uh, you'd really need to shell out to go on this cruise and be jammed in with thousands of other people uh, that you can't escape from for a week. And of course, some of that money is going to go toward uh, making a nice and welcoming terminal. Uh, so that means we're going to have some green space just to break up all this concrete and tile and everything and make it a little more nice. And then that's just going to contrast even more with the other dock, which is going to be much simpler and less expensive looking. A little bit more poorly maintained, I guess. Okay, so now we're moving a bit farther away from the shore. Uh, I just wanted to delineate between the employee only area and the pedestrian area. So we have this little parking lot on either side here, which I imagine is like the employee parking. 
uh, so they have easier access to the building. Uh, and that's just separated by a couple little fences there. I'm not sure exactly how the cars get in and out uh, without having to get out and manually move the fences, which seems kind of annoying, uh, but I'm sure they'll find a way. And then there are just some trees there to keep it a little bit more separate from the pedestrian area, which kind of loops around on either side of the parking lot and meets up at the main entrance to the building. Um, by the way, I haven't mentioned this recently, but you might want to take a look down at the population number uh, near the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I've been uh, putting down some housing off screen, and of course we've also been putting down quite a few high rises during the main course of the series. And so that's just all adding up and we're getting to a very nice population, I think. Um, so seeing that number inflate down there is just making me very, very happy. Almost as happy as it makes me to copy and paste tile decals over and over again with Move It. It brings great joy to my life. And now this is uh, one of my favorite parts of the build, uh, which is I downloaded this uh, 100 megabyte uh, JetBridge pack. It's like the only way I could get this asset in particular. And 100 megabytes might not sound like a, mut a lot, but <laughs> when you have three, I think I have like 3,500 custom assets loaded for the city, which ends up being about, I think I'm pushing 32 gigs of RAM now when I load up the city, which is how much I have. You know, every megabyte is gonna count, but it's totally worth it for this because it looks so cool. And there's something on the real thing that basically looks like a jet bridge like this. So I just wanted to include that little detail. And I think it almost get, makes it look a bit like uh, like an insect from above or something. It's really cool. It just gives it a nice little silhouette. And I'm fairly certain, I don't know for sure, but I'm fairly certain it's used for boarding the cruise ships like this. So I just uh, move it over a bit and uh, plug it into the cruise ship there. Make it look like people are getting on. And this is what I'm talking about with constant cruise ships ridiculous. Uh, although I do, I should mention, I have since stopped the vanilla cruise ship from spawning just because it doesn't quite fit the look that I'm going for. And I have a custom asset now. Yeah, this is going to be happening for a while. So we'll just have to get used to it, unfortunately. Yeah, when I was positioning the, uh, the functional cruise dock, I didn't consider the fact that the, the ships would dock uh, facing that way. I assume they would just, you know, drive in and dock like a normal boat, uh, but no, they have to go into reverse to be able to dock, I guess. Um, but at this point, it's too late, and I, I don't have the, the stamina to go back in and <laughs> completely rearrange this after I've already put in all these details. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to uh, not only deal with, these, with this while we're building it, but we're just going to have to uh, put up with it until the end of time, at least until the end of time in Toto Santos, uh, which is most likely going to be in the very distant future, uh, judging by the rate at which I've been able to put out videos so far. But I'm just happy that I was able to get any ships coming in at all and have it actually functioning, because it seems like whenever you mess with with the way that vehicles like this spawn and interact with buildings, uh, it tends to just not work by default if you don't do everything right. So I'm glad I was able to, to get it to work, if only by accident. And a lot of things in this game and in this city in particular really do happen by accident. Some of them happy, some not so happy. Most of them happy, happy little accidents. Uh, so you've probably seen all these people marching in from the cruise ship that just docked. Just another sign that it's working, it's great. Uh, I really like to, to have that sort of realism where a lot of the tourists coming to the city would be coming in via cruise ships. And so we have people coming in via cruise ships. Doesn't get better than that. Uh, you get to actually see them go there and then you can follow them and 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 see what routes they're going to take which buses they're going to take or where they're going to drive that kind of thing lots of fun and i mean if it were real life it would be extremely creepy but since it's a, a video game with uh, little pixel people uh, i guess it's fine i don't know i mean now that i'm saying it out loud i feel kind of weird um anyway the, the reason i mentioned uh the people there is that i just wanted to point out that i was uh doing a little bit of uh, extension of the pedestrian area there I guess that would be the entrance because uh, there's like those turnstiles. So that's where you'd go in and show your tickets and everything. And then you'd get into the building and, and wait there uh, until your cruise ship showed up. And then you'd go on across the jet bridge or the, the ship bridge, I guess. What, is that like a called a gangway or gang? I don't know. Let me know what it's called if you know. Uh, but anyway, they'd uh, cross that and be on their merry way across the, I guess it's the Caribbean or the Atlantic. I'll have to come up with names for all these things, I guess. I don't really want it to be set in the real world. I want it to be uh, an alternate universe 
where cruise ships can drive through cruise docks with no issues. And the bodies of water have different names. If you have any good idea for names for the ocean or oceans that surround this area, uh, please do let me know and I will take a look at them and maybe I'll implement them in the city. And, you know, don't limit your suggestions just to the bodies of water. If you have any other ideas for areas or things that uh, need names, let me know. Uh, that's something that I've seen other City Skylines YouTubers do. I guess I'm a City Skylines YouTuber. It sounds weird to say out loud. But anyway, I've seen other people do it and it seems like a pretty fun idea, so yeah. Okay, now we're moving slightly farther away from the shore and I wanted to uh, have this little storage area here, so I <laughs> figured they'd need lots of deck chairs for their cruise ships. So I put uh, some deck chair storage there. Maybe not the best idea to have it uncovered uh, where it could get rained on and get all mossy and covered in algae and stuff, but uh, you know, that's not my questionable judgment. That's whoever set up this cruise ship terminal. They just weren't thinking. Now we're moving even farther away from the shore, back to where visitors are absolutely prohibited, uh, because this is where all the behind the scenes work gets done for preparing the cruise ships and loading up the cruise ships and uh, performing maintenance and fueling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, basically all the things I have absolutely no idea about, because I I mean, I guess I've seen cruise ships in real life. I've never uh, set foot on one, let alone understood how they operate. In fact, my only point of reference for cruise ships at all is a very humorous essay about uh, a trip on a cruise ship by David Foster Wallace called A Supposedly Fun Thing I'll Never Do Again, uh, which I believe is available for free online. I will link that in the description, hopefully, assuming I can come up with that uh, link at the time of upload. Uh, but needless to say, uh, it's not very illuminating on the actual uh, behind-the-scenes function of a cruise, uh, so I'm just mostly using my imagination at this point uh, to try to figure out what sort of details might be back here where, uh, where the riffraff would not be able to see it or get in the way. And again, I'm bringing these uh, ploppable surfaces out just so I can get creative with some decals. Um, and I just try to consider like, oh, they need to have fuel out here, they would need to have power, so I have that transformer there. Um, assuming that they would have some sort of underground line brought out here, because I didn't want to run power lines out here, it just seemed kind of weird. Um, you know, they need materials, so they have some empty pallets where they've had various, I don't know, whatever kind of materials they need there. Uh, some giant tubes, because it looks kind of industrial and ship-like, uh, so that's why those are there. And then I'm just having these lines here and the posts just to make sure the building is extra protected from all this, you know, heavy work that's going on out here. And also, I haven't mentioned this yet, but there are uh, bollards that I ran all along here, and that's just so they can tie the ships up and keep them from floating away. By the way, I didn't know this, but uh, bollard actually originally referred to this kind of post where you moor up a boat. It was only after that uh, that it was used to refer to uh, things that you put on the side of a road to keep cars from running people over, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. Two pretty important inventions with the same name, but uh, kind of completely different functions when you think about it. Anyway, I wanted to, uh, I figured these, uh, I'm going to call them jet bridges, but you know what I mean. I, I figured these jet bridges would probably need to rotate in and out so they could, uh, you know, adjust to where they need to go and then just be folded away when they're not in use. Just to keep that area a little bit safer, I thought I'd put these keep clear decals so, uh, you know, you're not going to have a, a car parked right next to it when it starts to move or something like that, which would uh, not be good for workplace safety. And then I stumble across these uh, beautiful puddle decals. That's really not something you hear every day, uh, beautiful puddles, but uh, I think they are uh, quite beauteous and uh, I think they really just complete the look that it's this uh, busy cruise ship dock out in the water where, you know, water's going to get splashed around every once in a while. That's just uh, how it is in Toto Santos. Everybody's making waves and getting everything wet. And now we're just putting some finishing touches on with a little bit of lighting because I figured they'd need to be able to see their way around here. You know, maybe cruise ships would get in at night or maybe they'd need to take care of some, some maintenance type stuff at night when the cruise ships aren't there. Who knows? But anyway, they're going to need to see their way around the docks. Okay, now we're finally back on shore, uh, and my land-loving legs are loving it. So this is where I start to depart a little bit from the real-life inspiration, and I just wanted to go with my imagination more to uh, get this uh, tourist area going. So 
I'm just experimenting around here with some building placement. And the look I end up uh, settling for is something where at ground level, uh, they go with the uh, Spanish colonial look, uh, just to kind of replicate maybe the feeling of the old town is what they're going for. Uh, but then sticking up out of these buildings, I uh, have just some very generic uh, cosmopolitan looking sky rises, uh, just so they can fit in more people. And don't worry, this what you're seeing right now is absolutely not the final look. Um, like I said, it was uh, just an experiment to uh, see what I could get here. So I come back now and replace them with something a little bit more low profile to begin with, and just a little bit more easy on the eyes compared to a giant concrete block of a building, which there's nothing wrong with that in the right context, but this is absolutely not the correct context for that, in my opinion, unless it's used for parking hundreds of cars, like that parking garage that's there that does not get moved. <laughs> also, this uh, building here, Europa Monaco, amazing. Absolutely perfect for the city. I love it. Now, I like what I end up doing here because I have this building with the big brick back. Big brick back. Big brick back. Big brick back. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to cut that out. You're welcome. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't think the big brick back, <laughs> I didn't think that really fit. Uh, so what I end up doing is clipping it into this little building, kind of going for that style that I was talking about before. And then what I do is I copy it and paste it after making sure the color matches the very beautiful building that is beneath it. And then I turn it around just to uh, cover up all that brick. And I think that uh, gives a nice look. You know, all those rooms there could have a nice view of the uh, Europa Monaco and the parking garage. I think those would probably be the very cheap rooms. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like the final look of that building. I think it evokes that uh, style I was going for pretty well to the point where like you could probably even figure out that was my goal without me telling you uh, just from looking at that building at least that's what I hope and I'm uh, just finessing the colors on those so they're all a little bit different and I just think having all those variety of colors is very nice to look at in these very finely crafted assets which you can find in my mod list which has been updated for 2022 if you're interested don't click on it if you're not interested that would be silly Okay, now we are moving on to the second cruise dock, which is going to be a little bit less exciting than the first one with much less detail, but I think it's going to have its own uh, nice look that's going to serve to contrast with the other one. And it's not like, you know, run down or anything. It's just a little simpler uh, without all these uh, silly features like trees and, and parking and all that. Instead, this uh, cruise dock company, whoever's running this, has chosen to spend their money on a giant uh, functionless arch. Uh, and I also have this... <laughs> I mean, this is just one of my favorite assets in the city. Not not just in the city, on the workshop. This uh, pedestrian path, it's actually a network, so you can make, you know, bridges and stuff with it. And it's based off a real one. Uh, I can't say I remember where it is or what its function is, but uh, I just think it's so cool. It almost looks like a, like a finger trap toy or something. And that's just kind of the, you know, festive entrance to this cruise dock. Uh, so you might have seen me covering up a, a bit of a tunnel there. Oh yeah, poked through there. Uh, and the reason for that is that my original plan was to make this one functional on one side, just like the other cruise dock was. Uh, and I just could not get the building itself to function without having a bunch of issues come up. Uh, I had tried to put that tunnel there so that it could access services uh, from the mainland. And they didn't seem to want to go over there. And uh, obviously because this is just a flat dock and it doesn't have a building on it, uh, I couldn't actually put the services on the dock. So I just end up uh, giving up on trying to make it functional. I figured one success was good enough and I should just uh, quit while I'm ahead in terms of functionality. But other than that, I just tried to make it look like the other one in terms of the uh, imagined functionality and not the actual functionality, like with those bollards and the little bumpers on the sides. Yeah, this happens too. I, I, I honestly have no idea what that <laughs> ship is doing. Uh, but while it's there, might as well point out that's the custom asset I'm using. Uh, it's pretty nice as far as cruise ships go, I think. Okay, I feel like I've been talking for way too long, so I'm going to close my blabber mouth for just a minute while I put down some details on the surface of this dock, and I will meet you back at the far end of the dock in not too long.
So, in the real cruise ship dock, there are these uh, little pillars, I guess, that uh, kind of hold up the that bridge system I was talking about before that sticks out uh, into the water, uh, which I assumed was to just keep the ships in, in, in their place, but I wanted to do that over here. But anyway, the one in real life is like painted red on the outside, I assume just to make it more visible so that people don't uh, drive into it with their ships and boats and what have you. I looked all through my asset collection and I didn't feel like quitting out of the game to go to the workshop. So I just ended up using these little buildings uh, for the smaller ones. We ha just have simple one by one buildings that I've colored red. And then for the uh, far one right at the tip, I use a two by two office building and turn that one red as well. Then I'm going to just bring these bridge pieces out one by one and make it look like uh, these have been spread across here. And I'm just assuming that these bridges are like for access so that they can access the bollards that are out there or for maintenance or whatever. Uh, if you know anything about this, please do let me know. Uh, because at this point, I'm really just starting to make guesses and they seem like plausible guesses, but you never know. There are so many things in the world that just uh, don't really line up with what your first expectation is, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, of course I could just Google all this stuff, but I'd rather hear it from you guys. So really quickly, I'm going to go over uh, the structure of the end of this episode and uh, the entirety of next episode. So because this is one build split into two parts, this, by the way, this is sort of like what we did in episodes 27 and 28. In those episodes, I gave my reasons for doing this. Uh, but anyway, because it's one big build split into two parts, uh, there aren't going to be cinematics at the end of this video, which makes me a little sad. I hope it doesn't make you sad. That would make me even more sad, which would suck. But what that means is that next episode, we're going to be uh, finishing off the build, doing some more cool stuff, and there will be an extra long, uh, hopefully immersive and uh, interesting cinematic video for you to watch. Uh, so hopefully you will uh, be interested enough in this build to come back for that one. If the episode is not released yet, I'm going to be releasing it as soon as is practical. Uh, otherwise, if you are watching this after both episodes have released, then just go check out the next one. You'll be able to see the semantics. If you're only interested in those, then of course you're welcome to just skip to the end. I'll put, I always put timestamps in the descriptions of my videos so you can uh, access whatever part you want to. Although I think there are a lot of very cool things that we'll be doing next time. Uh, so you might want to put up with my commentary for another half hour and maybe give the time lapse a chance. It's really up to you. Okay, now I'm putting this little dude down here. Um, <laughs> I wanted to have, just to show that this is, you know, it's not like a horrible place or anything, but uh, it's it's just a little poorly maintained. And so they've finally been able to send a single guy in here and <laughs> and uh, fix this uh, patch on the dock that's showing up here where the concrete is worn away for whatever reason. And so he's just standing there leaning on his shovel, looking at this like, how the hell am I supposed to do this by myself? So that's the little story behind that there. And then I'm just putting a few lines here. Again, this is the sort of detail that uh, in a city of this size, I normally wouldn't get to, but I just really wanted to focus on this dock area. And I figured they would need some sort of line to indicate uh, that this is probably shouldn't be standing beyond this line because you might, you know, fall into the water and, and that's generally not conducive to uh, your well-being. And I think we should center our city here around increasing everybody's well-being. Okay, and now a cruise ship has docked here at the less nice cruise terminal. And because it's a little less nice, instead of having that nice jet bridge to get across, you gotta climb up a big ladder, which looks a little sketchy if I'm being honest, but uh, you know, this uh, cruise ship asset is so nice that I'm just gonna forget about that. And then just these little, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, hooks, I guess, to uh, attach them to the walkway there. And just mirroring the other cruise ship terminal, uh, we're just making it a little bit moist with these beautiful, beautiful puddle decals. Okay, now that we've taken care of our moisture over here, we're going to the very last part of this episode, which is revealing these amazing cruise line buses. Great asset from the workshop, and they are now driving all around the city, carrying our tourists to and from all the cool destinations like the castle, the old town, the downtown, etc. In place of cinematics here, I've included uh, some footage of me struggling to fix a disgusting traffic jam that I mentioned last episode. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Toto Santos. I cannot wait to see you on the next one, where we will be finishing up this area and doing lots and lots of detailing. 
And like I said, there will be an extra long cinematic video at the end. Bye. still here. Uh, let me know if you have any tips to fix this traffic jam. Because this broke me. This really broke me. And I just, I, I, I miss having cars flowing everywhere. But really, you're still watching. I'm impressed. I really appreciate your time. You know that? You know, my av the average watch time on my videos is nothing compared to you sticking around for 37 minutes. That's really big. Thank you so much. Bye. Hope you have a good day. Or night. Or morning. Afternoon. Noon. Evening. Dawn. Dusk. Sunset. Sunrise. <laughs>